Hello, vintage computer friends. It's been a while since the last video on my YouTube channel, but this opportunity was just too good to pass up. So I got myself one of these Naboo computers, right? And if you are following popular vintage or retro computer channels such as Adrian's Digital Basement on YouTube, right? You of course know what that's all about, right? So the Naboo computer from Canada, um, and yeah, I ordered mine three weeks ago, just the day after the first video on Adrian's Digital Basement. And it arrived three days ago and I was lucky enough to get my Naboo so quickly, right? Because by now, of course, you might know that the seller has um, temporarily suspended his business because he's no longer able to keep up with the demand, right? Because, yeah, after, you know, the coverage on Adrian's Digital Basement channel, um, the demand is huge, of course, right? And, um, but, I mean, my friends and I, we were actually looking at this even before the Adrian's uh, video, right? Um, when it first appeared on eBay, right? Because we thought, okay, for this price, you know, that's a very interesting machine. Um, and uh, even the keyboard, I would say, is this fantastic Alps keyboard has a really, really good quality, right? It's worth the uh, money, the amount that the seller is asking for, right? And I hope that, you know, you will still be able to also get your own machine once the seller reopened his business and was able to, you know, fulfill the outstanding requests. So, yeah, the machine arrived three days ago and the first thing I did was, of course, I built the connector cable, right? It's all documented on naboo.ca, right, Canada? this Canadian website where you of course find the uh, Naboo network um, adapter file server, right? Um, really a fantastic uh, re-engineering effort within three weeks, you know, these guys have figured out the protocol and um, uh, also find and restored the original programs and now, you know, you can just build the cable, download the Naboo Internet Adapter software for your Windows or Mac PC, right, or even Linux is supported. The software installs and runs out of the box, right, and then you get this Naboo network uh, running, basically, and hosting the files from your Windows or Mac PC, right, and since this is a um, uh, storage-less device, right? All the software that this machine can run comes over the adapter cable, right? From the server, right? Uh, I think there are currently also some projects uh, in preparation or going on that would add a floppy drive or so, right? Uh, or an SD card storage solution to the Naboo. But as far as I know, um, those projects are not ready for prime time yet, right? But this is, and I mean, there is software, right? So look at network services channel for example and I was expecting some very poor ports of games right <laughs> it's also fun to see these ads basically um, being sprinkled in right when a program loads over the network right and there's Pac-Man right but look at this Pac-Man right so this is actually a very fun port of Pac-Man um, very very decent so they definitely had very talented and skilled developers and programmers uh, for Naboo working, right? So, really nice port, fun to play, right? And, by the way, um, the joystick plugs in here, right? At the, um, at the bottom, at the um, rear of your keyboard. So, in order to exit an application, you use the symbol key, right? And then there are three function keys restart, exit, and help. So in this case, it's symbol exit, right? And then you get back to the menu, um, to the channel that um, you had opened when you started the app. So I'm expecting to still be in the network channel, network services, right? And there are other, other games here, but you know, Qbert and so on. Not a big fan of Qbert. So let's go back one level. So this is a Naboo network top level again. And under World of Games, you know, there are actually more uh, fun games, uh, right? Quite a few. So you can navigate the pages with page forward and backward here, right? Dig Dark, Miner 2049, Galaxian, also fun, right? But this game here, the first one, and Arctic Venture also really surprised me in terms of quality. And again, it's a fun game to play, right? So let's have a quick look. Um... I'm really not a gamer and I'm terrible at it, so please forgive me for messing up uh, big time, right? 
but uh, that's actually a game from Konami here, Konami, which I consider fun to play. So you gotta collect all these little flags, your little penguin, and of course don't fall into the into the cracks here, right? Anyhow, so so much for games um, that that'll keep you busy for a bit, right? But um, then, of course, you'll also want to do some more serious stuff with the machine. And the Naboo network also got you covered there. Because if you go to um, up one level, we're leaving the games channel. If you go to the home management channel, right, then you find things like uh, programming languages like Naboo Basic. All kinds of fancy programs, like yeah, literally, like fancy font, fancy font tutor, etc. But what I wanted to show you is uh, the Nabu writer, right? Because that's a good test case uh, for demonstrating the excellent keyboard, right? So let's see if we can actually write a text file here, right? And I'm not sure um, how this originally worked, right, because there's no local storage in this machine. Was this uh, file that you are going to write uploaded to some server, right, or do you need a floppy drive for this, right? But here is the text word processor and I can actually type quite fast on this very nice keyboard. So yeah, touch typing. It's definitely possible. So, very nice. Let's exit the word processor symbol exit. Do you want to exit? Yes, no, and then we got to use these yes or no buttons here, right? And I'm saying yes. I'm not sure if my file has been saved anywhere now. Maybe on my local PC that is hosting the Naboo internet adapter file server, but I doubt it, right? So anyhow, let's have a look at the basic, Naboo basic. Qbird at Are you a Nabu preferred customer? Okay, so how about we print a times table, right? Print i going from 1 to 100 as well as i squared. Actually, that's not a not a times table, but a square table, right? And you can use Ctrl C to stop. All right, that's basic. Okay, so I was looking, of course, for other programming languages and I thought, okay, I think there should also be a logo, right? And to my surprise, I didn't find the logo in the productivity or what was it called? The, um, the home management um, channel, right? So that's basic, but if you go through the pages here, you don't find logo. So <clears throat> I found logo by accident in the education channel, right? And so in the education channel, you can learn about, uh, I don't know, logic, mathematics, social studies, uh, science, etc. right? Very good. And it seems that some of these uh, modules, these learning modules were implemented in logo. So if we go to language arts, we can start the Alpha Lab, right? And I was just playing around with, with the machine, trying out some stuff, right, on the channel. And you see here 50% of the logo manuals, only for $10 for a limited time. So make sure to take advantage of this great deal. So a logo activity is now loading, right? And um, I have no idea actually how to start this logo learning activity, right? Uh, from Alpha Labs, and the options are first matching capital, two matching small, etc. So, how about we start um, module one matching capital? And it seems that this is now loading basically first logo and then loading a logo program. 
And as I said, so there is logo, right? And I have no idea how to how to start the activity. So, but we have logo, and hey, that's even better, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm erasing everything that's a memory, right? All the definitions from the learning activity are gone now, and I can actually um, use logo, and I have the turtle at my disposal, right? So how about we use logo to define a Koch snowflake fractal? Right, so uh, I put logo in, I turned on the caps uh, lock button, right, it's easier to read on the little screen. And in a standard logo you can call the screen editor by using add and then the name of the procedure that you want to define, right. And um, by the way, this increasing pitch tone is the audible analog of a progress loading bar, right. So. So it seems sometimes it has to load um, segments um, from from the network, right? For example, the editor here, right? And okay, so to Koch, I'm now ready to define my snowflake fractal um, definition, right? And it needs two arguments. So one is the iteration depths, and one is the length, right? So let's start with the lengths, L and N. So those are the two arguments to the Koch procedure. And uh, let me quickly remind you how the snowflake fractal is defined. So um, let's shine some light on my boogie board here. Hope you can see this, but basically it's um, this this structure here, right? So this is the base uh, side length. And um, <clears throat> so of course it's turtle graphics, right? The turtle starts here on the left bottom, um, then goes this way, right? And then it has to make a, um, a left turn by 60 degrees, right? Go forward again, then make a right turn by 120 degrees and so on, right? Then there's another left turn by 60 degrees here. And um, so the fractal is of course then defined recursively, right? So basically the whole base pattern is applied to each of the sides, right? And you see that um, the length is increased by one third, right? So this is level one. Level two looks like this. And uh, you get the idea, right? So very nice classic um, turtle graphic application. So let's define this in logo. And I'm zooming in here a little bit so you can see the little screen a little bit better. Also, um, turn off the light again. There's no glare. Okay, let's start with the definition of our Koch snowflake fractal procedure. First, we want to test if uh, n is zero, right? So if n is zero, then there are two cases. Either it's true or it's not true. It's false, right? Then it's greater than zero. And in case it's zero, right? If true, then we reach the um, the base case of our recursion, right? Then we really only want to um, make the uh, turtle move forward, right? By the current length, right? So it draws basically um, a side to the fractal. Else, if it's false, right? Then we have the recursive case now. We want to call the procedure recursively. And as I said, the length is now reduced to one third, right? Because it's this triangular structure. And we also reduce um, the um, recursion depth uh, by one, right? So one level down in the recursion, right? Now this was the first segment, right? And um, now I said the turtle has to make a left turn by 60 degrees before it can um, do a recursive call for the next um, side, right? And same story again one third of the length and reduce the iteration, the recursion depths by one. Now we got to make the 100 degree right turn before we do another recursive call, right? Again, one third. And then the last um, <clears throat> left turn is again by 60 degrees LT, right? And the last recursive call So, double check, um, that all looks good, right? And to end the procedure, you use end. So unfortunately, I cannot uh, 
So um, put these individual statements in the block, right? In the in the then in the else block, if false, basically on multiple lines, right? So um, so this has to be one long line from um, beginning square parentheses to closing square parentheses. I tried um, putting that block over multiple lines, right? But then I'm getting errors, so it's not supported, unfortunately. This, of course, messes up the visual formatting of the code big time. But hey, it seems that's the way it is. So in order to exit the editor, you got to use Control C. And now you see that Koch is defined, right? So now we want to prepare, prepare the stage. First, we are clearing the screen. And usually the turtle starts in the middle of the screen, right? So what I want to do is I want to put the turtle here and facing um, eastwards so that it can go to the right. To do this, uh, we first um, um, raise the pen, right? Pen up, so it doesn't make a line when we go from here to there. And then I'm um, putting the turtle um, at this position in the bottom uh, left corner, right? Um, I hope I remember the... Yeah, it's set pos, right? Set pos, and then it's a list x coordinate and y coordinate so this is a <clears throat> bottom left corner right and now i can um, lower the pen pen down so the turtle is now ready to draw i can also set the um, the turtle foreground color to 10 which is a nice visible color and then i also got to make sure that the turtle which is initially starting um, facing northwards right it has to face eastwards so that it can paint to the right so right by 90 degrees and now um, set FC um, what did I do that's the wrong color um, okay set it's set PC actually so let's do that again clear screen pen up set pause minus 100 minus 80 pen down, set pen color, PC, to 10, and then write 90. Okay, and now I'm ready to call our Snowflake Fractal Koch procedure, let's say with a base side length of 220 and a depth of 4. Oh, okay, I don't know how to if false, and indeed there is a typo, right? So let me... Um, bring up the definition by invoking the editor again at Koch and see it should be if for it's basically with 2f right that should be it Control C now let's try the very same thing again and <clears throat> positive side effect is that I'm getting very familiar with the keyboard But now, huh? Ha! Now our turtle is busy. Adjust the camera a bit. I hope you can see that well. Alright guys, that's it for now. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this first hands, first looks uh, at the Naboo computer and uh, maybe you can also still get one. Until then, bye bye. Thanks for watching.